Intel 200S Boost is a new Intel technology that lets you overclock the memory subsystem without avoiding warranty. Today I want to talk about Intel 200S Boost, a new Intel overclocking feature that was made available for Arrow Lake Case Q processors from April 22nd, 2025. This overclocking technology allows you to overclock the memory subsystem, including the NGU, the D2D and the memory. The NGU and the D2D can be overclocked to 3.2 gigahertz and the memory up to DDR5-8000. But most importantly, this overclocking is covered by warranty. After enabling Intel 200S Boost, the DDR5 memory bandwidth and latency improved by about 30%. And there's more performance to be squeezed out of an Arrow Lake CPU without voiding its warranty. Let's have a closer look. The Intel 200S Boost program allows motherboard vendors and system integrators to use a subset of the overclocking features available for Arrow Lake KSQ processors when they're paired with a Z890 motherboard. It is still considered overclocking, however, even though it's covered by warranty, so stability will vary system to system. The 200S Boost program specifically enables for the creation of a motherboard BIOS option or profile that loads a tested set of up to values the up to values are specified by Intel as follows. Effectively, 200S Boost is an easy way to enable XMP without voiding the warranty because, yes, enabling XMP still technically voids warranty. Voltages and frequencies exceeding these values fall outside of the 200S Boost program. Furthermore, no other voltages may be adjusted from Intel's defaults to remain covered by warranty. Lastly, the 200S Boost should be disabled by default as it requires an explicit opt-in from the user. Motherboard vendors and system integrators are expected to characterize what their system is capable of within the 200S Boost program limits. If your board cannot run the high memory frequency like DDR5-8000, then your 200S Boost profile should reflect that. So maybe it should go up to 7600 or 7200 or something like that. The Intel 200S Boost program is specifically targeted to motherboard vendors and system integrators, but it captures a bunch of memory settings as well. So memory vendors may look into adjusting some of their memory kits to make it compatible with the Intel 200S Boost program. The specific memory configuration limits for the 200S Boost program allow for up to DDR5-8000 with 1.4 volt memory voltage. That means the higher speed XMP kits may fall outside this specification limit. For example, Corsair's Vengeance RGB 48GB DDR5-9200 falls outside both frequency and voltage specification. It's possible that memory vendors may use one of the five available XMP 3.0 profiles to add a 200S Boost compatible profile to their kit. Now let's have a look at the performance improvements we get from enabling 200S Boost. I'll compare it to the default configuration as well as the configuration where I just enable XMP. The default configuration for this 2x24GB memory kit has it running at DDR5-5600. The system we're using consists of the following hardware. Note that I'm not using a discrete graphics card, but instead we'll use the integrated graphics for running the 3D workloads. We use Windows 11 and the following benchmark applications to measure performance. Enabling the Intel 200S Boost technology is pretty simple. Upon entering the BIOS, go to the Extreme Tweaker menu, Make sure Performance Preferences is set to Intel Default Settings and Intel Default Settings is set to Performance. Then set Intel 200S Boost to Enabled. And now save and exit the BIOS. We rerun our benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default operation and with XMP enabled. The Geomean performance improves by about 3% when enabling XMP 8000 and another 2 percentage points when enabling Intel 200S Boost. The biggest performance jump between XMP and 200S Boost is in AI Benchmark, where we get an additional 5 percentage points higher performance with the faster fabric speeds. 
The ADA64 memory bandwidth is pretty similar comparing 200S Boost and XMP, but the memory latency improves quite significantly by enabling 200S Boost. Of course, it's entirely possible to squeeze even more performance out of your system without voiding the warranty. For example, we can tune the memory timings and we can increase the Turbo Boost power limits. For adjusting the memory timings, I often rely on the ASUS memory presets. Basically, ASUS memory presets is an ASUS overclocking technology that provides you with a number of memory presets that tune the memory subtimings as well as adjust some of the voltages. On the ASUS ROG Z890 Apex motherboard with BIOS 0041, there are eight presets available for Hynix 2x16 and 2x24GB memory. I loaded the Hynix 8600 2x24GB profile for my testing. This memory profile also sets the memory voltage to 1.5V, which would fall outside the 200S boost specification. So to comply with the program while keeping the optimized memory timings, I save the memory preset, then go back into the BIOS and reinforce the 200S boost setting. Then I go into the DRAM timings submenu and manually set the timings to the current values. I'm using a beta BIOS, however, so it's entirely possible that on final BIOSes, the 200S boost limits will be enforced even when you enable the memory presets. Fine tuning the memory timings gives us another 1.5 percentage point geomean performance improvement. The biggest improvement is in PY Prime, where we see more than 6 percentage points improvement. Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 technology allows the processor to run faster than the base frequency if it's operating within power, current, and thermal limitations. The obvious upside is higher performance in both multi threaded and single threaded workloads. The Turbo Boost algorithm works according to an EWMA formula. This stands for Exponentially Weighed Moving Average. There are three parameters to consider, PL1, PL2, and Tau. Intel defines three power profiles for the Arrow Lake processors, baseline, performance, and extreme. The performance profile is the one that's recommended by Intel as the default profile for most systems. The extreme profile is provided as a guidance in case you want to support overclocking. However, this profile is not validated by Intel, and therefore running the extreme profile means you're running out of spec. However, since it's not overclocking, it doesn't void the warranty. An easy ASUS multi-core enhancement option on ASUS motherboards allows you to unleash the turbo boost power limits. Unleashing the power limits gives us another 2 percentage point geomean performance improvement. The biggest improvement is an AI benchmark with the integrated graphics where we see more than 3 percentage points improvement. The Intel 200S Boost technology is an interesting addition to Intel's Overclockers toolkit. It's not revolutionary in the sense that this is not something that we can't do on our own already, but it's significant because it's overclocking covered by a warranty. I think if this program is successful, it opens up a wide avenue for even more aggressive default settings for future CPUs. Personally, I'll be using the Intel 200S Boost in my future Scatterbencher guides as a replacement for enabling XMP. Usually, my first overclocking strategy is always unlocking the power and enabling XMP. And well, 200S Boost also enables XMP, plus it adds faster fabric speeds. So it's very easy for me to swap that out. The first guide I will be using this with is either the Core Ultra 5 265K or the Arrow Lake Integrated Graphics. I'm not yet sure what I'll start first.